Diving deep into the core of my video content, I frequently explore the idea that seeking revenge against narcissists is not only futile, but also counterproductive. Instead of plotting retaliation, I advocate for a more empowering approach, focusing on self-recovery and forward momentum. The concept of revenge, especially when dealing with narcissists, can be alluring but ultimately leads to more harm than good. This is because narcissists thrive on conflict, manipulation, and the emotional turmoil they create. Engaging with them on their terms only drags you further into their toxic web, where they are the experts. Understanding this dynamic is crucial for anyone who has suffered at the hands of a narcissist. Hello everyone, it's Stoics Every Day, and I here I am again, with a new topic, yet not much discussed. Today we are going to talk about things that will break heart of a narcissist. I know there is not much that you can do to bring those moments ruined by these people. But, at least, we can learn to teach them a lesson. If you are new here, please subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for new content every week. You can also subscribe to our new channel Battle for Self, which talks about NPD in greater length. Let's get started now. I hope you enjoy the video. The idea that one can get even with a narcissist is fundamentally flawed. Narcissists possess a unique psychological makeup that makes them particularly resilient to the kinds of emotional consequences that would typically devastate a more empathetic person. Their lack of empathy and their distorted view of reality make them impervious to many of the tactics that might hurt someone else. However, it's important to recognize that while narcissists may not outwardly express it, certain actions can indeed wound them deeply. These actions often center around things they cannot control, like your indifference, your success, and your ability to move on without them. This is where we can find the greatest power in our response to narcissistic abuse. I've often emphasized that the real victory in these situations isn't in retaliating against the narcissist, but in reclaiming your own life. Your ability to move forward and build a fulfilling life without them is the ultimate testament to your strength and resilience. But let's take a closer look at why trying to hurt a narcissist on their level is a losing game. First, it's important to understand that narcissists are fundamentally driven by their need for validation and control. They construct elaborate facades to maintain a sense of superiority and invulnerability. Their lives are often characterized by a constant need to reinforce their ego which is surprisingly fragile despite the image they project. When you attempt to get even with a narcissist, you're essentially playing into their hands. They are masters at turning situations around to make themselves look like the victim or the hero, and you will almost always end up frustrated and emotionally drained. One of the most effective ways to cause emotional pain to a narcissist is by ignoring them, to many, being ignored is uncomfortable, but to a narcissist, it is excruciating. Narcissists depend on your attention and validation. It's their lifeblood, the fuel that keeps their inflated sense of self going. When you ignore a narcissist, you're essentially cutting off their supply, and this is something they cannot stand. At first, they likely saw you as a reliable source of attention and admiration, someone who would always be there to boost their ego. This is part of what drew them to you in the first place. Therefore, when you start ignoring them, it deals a serious blow to their self-esteem. It's not just about the loss of your attention, but the realization that you no longer see them as important. This is something that their grandiose sense of self cannot easily reconcile. To delve deeper into why this affects them so profoundly, we need to consider the narcissist's worldview. They see themselves as the center of the universe, deserving of constant admiration and attention. When you ignore them, it's a direct challenge to this perception. 
It forces them to confront the idea that they are not as important or as irreplaceable as they believe. This can be an existential threat to their identity. They may react with anger, attempting to regain your attention through various manipulative tactics. They might try to provoke you to get any kind of reaction, positive or negative. But the more you maintain your indifference, the more desperate they become. It's a situation that they find intolerable because it strips away the power they believe they have over you. What's more, ignoring a narcissist isn't just about refusing to engage with them. It's about reclaiming your power. Narcissists thrive on control, and when you ignore them, you're taking control back. You're showing them, and more importantly yourself, that they no longer have the ability to influence your emotions or your life. This is incredibly empowering and is a significant step in the healing process. When a narcissist realizes they can no longer manipulate you, it leaves them feeling powerless, which is something they despise. But let's move on to another critical aspect of this discussion, the concept of narcissistic injury. A narcissistic injury is a significant blow to a narcissist's self-esteem or self-worth. It occurs when their fragile ego is threatened, whether through criticism, rejection, or a challenge to their grandiose self-image. The extent to which a narcissist feels this injury can vary, but it often leads to intense emotional pain, anger, and even rage. This is because the narcissist's self-esteem is so precariously balanced on the opinions and reactions of others. When that balance is disturbed, it triggers a deep and often disproportionate response. The irony here is that narcissists work so hard to construct a facade of invulnerability, yet they are incredibly sensitive to any perceived slight even the most benign criticism or rejection can send them into a tailspin. This is why setting boundaries or holding a narcissist accountable can be so painful for them. It's not just that they dislike being told they're wrong. It's that their entire identity is built on the belief that they are superior and flawless. When you challenge that, you're forcing them to confront the reality that they are not as perfect as they believe. I recall discussing in a previous video how I inadvertently caused a narcissistic injury. It's a common experience among those who have dealt with narcissists. You might not even realize you've done it until you see the intense reaction it provokes. The narcissist might lash out, become angry, or try to turn the tables on you, making you feel like the bad guy. This reaction is a defense mechanism designed to protect their fragile ego. It's their way of avoiding the painful realization that they are not as perfect as they pretend to be. What's interesting is that narcissists often don't even realize they're doing this. They are so deeply entrenched in their own delusions that they can't see the reality of the situation. They genuinely believe that they are justified in their anger and that you are the one who has wronged them. This is part of what makes dealing with a narcissist so challenging. They live in a different reality, one that is carefully constructed to protect their ego at all costs. The effects of a narcissistic injury can be long-lasting. Even if the narcissist appears to have moved on, the wound remains. They may not express it, but it lingers in the background, influencing their actions and decisions. They may seek out new sources of validation, or they may become even more controlling and manipulative in an attempt to regain their sense of superiority. This is why it's so important to be aware of the potential impact of your actions when dealing with a narcissist. Understanding the dynamics at play can help you protect yourself and avoid getting drawn back into their toxic orbit. Moving on to another significant point, rejection. Rejection is one of the most painful experiences for a narcissist. They thrive on control and power, and rejection strips them of both. When you reject a narcissist, whether by ending the relationship, refusing to engage with them, 
or simply not giving them the attention they crave, it deals a severe blow to their ego. This is because rejection challenges their self-image as someone who is always in control, always desired, and always superior. It forces them to confront the reality that they are not as invincible as they believe. But rejection does more than just hurt the narcissist's ego. It also exposes their deepest insecurities. Narcissists often have a deep-seated fear of being abandoned or unloved, and rejection triggers this fear in a profound way. This is why they may react so strongly to even the slightest hint of rejection. They may become angry, defensive, or even try to win you back, not because they care about you, but because they can't stand the idea of losing control. The interesting thing about rejection is that it often has a long-lasting impact on the narcissist. Even if they appear to have moved on, the pain of being rejected stays with them. It lingers in their mind, influencing their behavior and decisions long after the relationship has ended. They may seek out new sources of validation, but the memory of being rejected by you will continue to haunt them. This is why rejecting a narcissist can be one of the most powerful ways to protect yourself. It sends a clear message that you are no longer under their control and it forces them to confront their own vulnerabilities. It's important to understand that rejection doesn't necessarily mean cutting off all contact. It can be as simple as refusing to engage with their manipulative tactics, not responding to their attempts to provoke you, or simply not giving them the attention they crave. By doing this, you're taking control of the situation and protecting yourself from further harm. This is crucial for your healing process because it allows you to move on without being dragged back into their toxic web. Let's now discuss a crucial aspect that many people overlook, the concept of moving forward. This is something that I hear time and time again from survivors of narcissistic abuse. After the relationship ends, many survivors find themselves stuck in a cycle of rumination, constantly replaying events in their minds, trying to make sense of what happened. This is completely normal, but it's also important to recognize when it's time to move on. Staying stuck in the past only gives the narcissist more power over you. Moving forward is not just about letting go of the past, it's about reclaiming your life. It's about recognizing that you have the power to create a new narrative for yourself, one that is not defined by the narcissist's manipulation or control. This is where true healing begins. It's not about forgetting what happened, but about using that experience to grow stronger and more resilient. It's about taking back control of your life and your future. The process of moving forward can be difficult, especially after experiencing the kind of emotional abuse that narcissists are known for. But it's important to remember that healing is a journey, not a destination. It's okay to take it one day at a time, to allow yourself to feel the pain and grief, but also to keep moving forward. Every step you take away from the narcissist is a step toward reclaiming your life and your happiness. It's also important to recognize that moving forward doesn't mean you have to go it alone. Support from friends, family, or a therapist can be incredibly helpful in this process. Surrounding yourself with people who understand what you've been through and who can offer support and encouragement is crucial. They can help you see things from a different perspective, offer advice, and provide the kind of emotional support that is so important during this time. Finally, I want to emphasize that moving forward is not just about leaving the past behind. It's about creating a new future. It's about setting new goals for yourself, finding new passions, and building a life that is free from the narcissist's influence. This is your chance to create a life that is truly your own one that is not defined by the past, but by the possibilities of the future.
It's about recognizing that you have the power to shape your own destiny and that the narcissist no longer has any control over you. In conclusion, dealing with a narcissist is never easy, but it's important to remember that you have the power to protect yourself and to move forward. By understanding the dynamics at play, you can take back control of your life and create a future that is free from their toxic influence. Whether it's through setting boundaries, rejecting their attempts to manipulate you, or simply moving forward with your life, you have the power to reclaim your happiness and your peace of mind. Remember, the best revenge is living well. The narcissist may never acknowledge the pain they've caused, but by focusing on your own healing and growth, you can ensure that their influence over your life is diminished. You deserve to live a life that is free from their manipulation and control. Take the steps you need to protect yourself and know that you are not alone on this journey. There is a community of survivors out there who understand what you've been through and who are here to support you. If you are someone who can't take this narcissist behavior in your life, please subscribe to our new channel, which talks about NPD in a great length. Let's make this community the most handful resource for all of us. Together, we can move forward and create a future that is bright, hopeful, and free from the shadows of the past. See you next time. Till then, stay stoic, stay strong.